How you guys doing? Mike the Coder here. Um, today we're gonna go over coin piles. Um, I'm having issues with like using the computer because of the the mouse pad is really hard to control on paint. So I'm gonna use pen and paper like old school. Okay, so on so in CSES coin piles, what is um what is coin piles? So essentially is is that we're given a pile of coins of A and a pile of coins of B. Okay, so in one operation, we could either minus one from A or minus two from B and minus two from B. So this is the first operation that we could do. So this is the first. In one operation, we could minus one from A and minus two from B. Or this is the second operation. The second operation, we could minus two from A or minus and minus one from B. Right, so this is the first operation we could do. Okay, and then this is the second one. Okay, this is the second operation we could do. Okay, so our job is is that um, is it possible that we could empty both of these piles of A and B? Okay, either using the first operation or the second operation. Okay, so let's just go over a few test cases. Okay, I'm gonna go over a few test cases. So in the, the most basic test case you could have is that you have let's say we have um uh. We have A is going to have two piles of coins and B is going to have four piles of coins. So we have one, two, three, four, because it's uh, two times the, the, the two times A. OK, so for the sake of this one, I'm going to assume I'm just going to always use the first operation. OK, I'm going to use always use the first operation. OK, so in this case, I'm just going to always use this operation of minus one from A and minus two from B. So. If I just always minus one from A, so I'm gonna remove one coin from A, and then I'm gonna remove minus two from B. So I'm gonna remove minus two from B. That's gonna be one operation, okay? And if I minus one from A, I'm gonna remove this coin, and then minus two from B, that'll be another operation. In the end, we see that we are able to empty both of these coins using the first operation, right, of subtracting one from A and subtracting two from B. Because in the end, both of these coins um, become zero, right? Both of these coins from zero, right? So this is what happened when A was equal to two and B was equal to four, okay? So in the end, when A was equal to two, like A had two coins, you see A had one, two, two coins and B had one, two, three, four coins, right? When this happened, um, we were able to get to zero, okay? But now well, let's say, um, let's show in a, a situation where we it cannot happen. So back, we're still gonna use the first operation, okay? We're still gonna use the first operation because the second operation is basically just flipping the first operation. All right, so let's say I, instead this time I have A is gonna equal to two and B is gonna equal to like six or, yeah, let's do six. So A is equal to two coins and B is equal to six, okay? So in one operation, I remove uh, one from A, one coin from A, and then two coins from B. In another operation, I remove one coin from A, and then two coins from B. So in the end, you see we still have we have a leftover uh, values of B, right? We have two left over from B. So as you could see here, um, if if one of the piles is two greater than two times the second pile, then this is not possible. Because in the end, what happens is that uh, what you're going to have some amount of coins left over from this operation. So if this, as in as you could see here, A is a, is a smaller pile, right? And B is a larger pile, right? So if if B is greater than two times A, then this is not possible. Assuming A is the smallest pile, so A is a smaller pile. and B is a larger one, right? If A is a smaller pile and B is a larger one and B is greater than two times A, this is not possible. Because in the end, if we keep subtracting one from A and two from B and one from A and two from B, we're gonna get something left over. And uh, if you don't believe me, you could try other situations of A is equal to like, two and B is equal to five. So I could show you that also. So A is equal to two and B is equal to five. One, two, three, four, five. 
right? So if I subtract one from A and then subtract two from B and then subtract one from A and subtract two from B, I'm gonna have a left over again. So this is also not, po not possible. And it's because B is greater than two times A, right? B is greater than two times A, so this is not possible. So if B is greater than two times A, it is not possible. Okay, and this is what, assuming that A is a smaller pile and B is a larger one. Okay, so now let's go back to the first part of this equation. Okay, so now what are the other situations when it is not possible? Okay, so um, the first operation is that we're subtracting one from A and subtracting two from um, B. So if we repeat this certain number of times over and over again, Let's, let's say x is the number of times we're subtracting, um, we're doing the first operation. So, so let's do let x is equal to the number of times doing the first operation. So yeah, sorry, my left hand is holding the camera. It's pretty hard here. So let x uh, is equal to number of times of first operation, okay? And let y is equal to the number of times of the second operation. Second operation. So, in the using the number of times, so we're going to do a certain number of operations of the first time, right? For x is going to be the number of times the first operation, and y is going to be the number of times the second operation. Okay? So, um, since we are subtracting a... Um, x number of times of the first operation, one from a, and then uh, b, we're gonna subtract two from b, certain x number of times over and over again. Um, what that means is that in the end, it's gonna get to zero, right? So if we're gonna use this, um, we could write an equation for this. So if I do a minus, um, since we're doing one time in each operation, and x is number of times for the first operation, it's going to be a minus one times x, right? Because we're subtracting a certain this number of times. And then this is going to equal to zero, okay? Right? Because if I subtract a um, x number of times using this a minus one, this certain number of times, we're going to get to zero, right? A is pile is going to be zero. And what about b? Well, b is going to be b minus two times x is going to equal to zero, okay? And that's the number of times using um, B's operation, because if we subtract B minus 2x uh, minus 2, this certain number of times using the first operation, since x is uh, the number of times the first operation, we're going to, in the end, we're going to get zero, okay? So if we were to add these equations up, we're going to get A, um, well, let's actually just solve this. So A is going to equal to x, and then B is going to equal to 2x, okay? And then if we were to add these equations up, a plus b is going to equal to 3x, right? Because x plus 2x is going to give us 3x, okay? So this is the first equation for the first operation, okay? First operation, the first operation. Now, what about the second operation? It's the exact same thing. If I do um, a is the number of, of coins on the in the first part, we're going to minus 2 y number of times, right? And it's going get, to get us to 0 because um, this is the number of times we're minusing 2 over and over and over again for the second operation, right? And then b minus 1 times y, 1 times y, because we're minusing 1 from b, this certain number of times over and over again, y times, which is the number of times we're doing the second operation. So this is the number of times the second operation is going to get us to 0. So then if we do a, uh, we do the exact same thing, we're going to get um, a plus b is going to equal to 3 times y. So now we have a plus b is equal to 3 times y, and a plus b is the 3 times x. So if we were to combine both of these equations, we're going to have a plus b is going to equal to 3 times y, and a plus b is 3 times x. What we see is that we could, um, we could factor... Uh, we could plug this in, okay? 
So we could literally plug this in. So if we were to, um, um, yeah, yeah. So if we were to add, uh, wait, no, not add. Yeah, yeah. If we were to add these equations up, technically, um, we would get uh, here. So let's add these equations up. We would get two a plus two uh, two times a plus b is going to equal to six times x plus y, right? Two times a plus b is going to equal to six times x plus y. And if we were to divide by two on both sides, we're going to get a plus b, right, we have to divide 2 on both sides of, of uh, this by this and divide by 2 by this is going to be a plus b is going to equal to 3 times x plus y, okay? a plus b is going to equal to 3 times x plus y. Okay, so if a plus b is going to equal to 3 times x plus y, what does that mean? It means that if you divide 3 on both sides, so a plus b divided by 3 is going to equal to x plus y. It means that if we're going to do a certain number of operations on the x for the x and the y using um, the, both of these first operation and the second operation, a plus b has to be divisible by 3, right? As you could see here, after we divided by uh, x plus y on both sides, Otherwise, this, these two operations would not work, right? So the two equations we have is that um, if, if B is greater than 2 times A or A plus B is not divisible by 3, then it's not possible. Otherwise, it is possible, okay? So if the, um, so in this case, uh, A is a smaller pile and B is a larger one, okay? So I'll, I'll just rewrite it again in the back of this. So I'll just rewrite this here. So if, if B is greater than two times A, where A is the smaller pile, right? A is the smaller pile. Or A plus B is not divisible by three. right is not equal to not equal to zero not divisible by three then it's not possible no otherwise it is possible okay so um in order to maintain that um a is a smaller pile we could swap it if a is larger than b right because uh remember our condition was when a was a, uh i believe a was a smaller pile let's go back to here yeah, A is the smaller pile and B is the larger one, right? If the larger pile is greater than two times the smaller pile, then it's um, not possible. So if we want to do that, we could actually just swap A and B if we're not sure of uh, which one's the larger and which one is the smaller one. So we could always maintain if A is uh, if A is larger than B, we could swap it to make sure A is always the smaller pile to check this condition, right? Because that doesn't affect this other equation. Yeah. All right. That's the, essentially the gist of this uh, problem. I'm going to show you guys the code now and that's it. All right, guys. So this is basically the code for the um, coin coin files. We read in the number of test cases. We dec While we decorate the number of test cases, we're going to read in A and B. Read in A and B. Um, if A is greater than B, we're going to swap A and B. And the reason why we do that is because we want to make, make sure that A is going to have the small pile, small pile of coins, and B has the large pile of coins. Okay. So if the smaller pile of coins multiplied by two is uh, still smaller than B, so if B is greater than two times A, or the, um, the sum of A and B is not divisible by three, we print out no. Okay. And otherwise, we print out yes. And that's basically the gist of how to do this problem. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.